This is the second video on the topic of figuring out a battery or alternator fault uh, when you're having electrical problems. The last video I focused on the battery and I suggest that you watch that one if you haven't already as these are really one topic which I'm just breaking down into manageable chunks. But anyway, here I'm going to assume that um, you've done some basic battery load testing and that you now need to check on the alternator to see if it is in fact charging the battery as it should. So your alternator is an uh, electrical generator basically that's driven by your uh, engine's accessory belt. Uh, here on this Ford it's about halfway down the back of the engine. Uh, we don't actually need to interact physically with it to test it. Uh, we'll do that at the battery. Uh, but what you can do for general purposes to start with is just check the belt and the belt tension. Uh, if the belt looks old or it's cracking, uh, you'll need to replace it. Uh, it could also be slipping if there's inadequate tension. Uh, so you can check the belt to see if it seems loose. You shouldn't be able to move it by hand much more than this. Uh, and it could still be slipping, uh, though, even if it's tight. Uh, if, for example, the alternator bearing is seizing up. In that case, you would hear squealing coming from the belt, in, um, usually on engine startup or when the engine is revved up a lot. Okay, the basic test for an alternator is to check that it's pro um, providing a charging voltage uh, and that it's able to do so under all conditions so that the battery is not getting discharged uh, even while the car's running. So firstly, um, make sure that you know what the battery's resting voltage is. Uh, preferably around 12 and a half volts, uh, so that you know it's in a charged state. I discussed this in the previous video, so here you just want a note of it. And then get the engine running, and using your multimeter, just watch the idle voltage across the battery terminals. So on modern cars like this Golf, it's likely to sit up high, around 14 volts. Uh, this is typical. Uh, but the rule here uh, for all cars is that we want to see it idling at uh, 12 volts bare minimum uh, irrespective of what the battery resting voltage was. So modern cars will typically raise the car's idle revs as, uh, as necessary as part of the smart charge systems uh, but we needn't worry about the exact number just as long as it's over 12. And the other thing we want to mention at this point is to check throughout these tests that it's never too high uh, as that would overcharge and uh, thus kill the battery. Now that figure historically would have been around 15 volts, uh, but modern calcium batteries are huge, used increasingly, uh, which can accept higher charging voltages, and they, you know, the, the charging system tends to be designed around that. So you might see up close to as uh, much as 16 volts from the charging system in these cases. So certainly if you see over 16 volts though, you're um, looking at a problem. So in, in the case of over voltage, it's likely to be something to do with voltage regulation. Uh, now that could point you to the alternator if it has an integrated voltage regulator, or it could be a separate problem to do with the car's ECU or um, external regulator. So depending on the car, we would then be getting into some complications. Now back to the basics. On the topic of smart charging and calcium, um, or in the case of this Ford, uh, silver calcium batteries, uh, you would want to double check that you have the correct type of battery. So if you install a classic lead acid type in these cars, uh, they will end up being overcharged on occasion because they can't take the higher voltages. And so the batteries will be killed off much earlier than they should be. So you need to make sure that you're using the right type for your car. Okay, next to uh, really test the alternator output, we want to introduce a loss of electrical load into the system. So the way you do that is just turn everything on. Uh, headlights, fog lights, high beam, put the fan blower on maximum, and so on. And then the voltage uh, may have dropped while the car car's idling, or it might not if the smart charge system is managing it. Uh, but anyway, what you want to do is increase the engine revs a, a little bit, maybe to 2000 RPM, and then watch the voltage to see that uh, it is at least half a volt over and above the battery resting voltage, which you made a note of earlier, uh, which would typically see it at 13 volts plus. So the voltage here uh, up toward 14 volts is obviously great. There's clearly no issue with the alternator in these cars.
So if you don't see voltage increasing much above the battery rest number during this test, uh, or if it drops even, uh, what will happen is the car might start and run, but the battery will then slowly lose charge and go flat during operation. Uh, which is why I said in my last video, if your car is dying during use, or won't restart because of a flat battery, that typically suggests the alternator is failing to charge it. Uh, but you do need to consider the battery also, as I overviewed there at the same time, in order to properly rule out one or the other. So those are the absolute basics I wanted to cover. Um, now I should say I'm not an auto electrician or anything like it. Uh, I'm not trying to cover deeply specific things in these videos. Uh, for example, a thorough test of this Ford alternator would require some knowledge particular to the Ford smart charging system and uh, also some specialist tools, a scope or, or two. Um, and it's not my intention to get into that. I just want to help you get pointed in the right direction so that you're not, you know, say, replacing good batteries thinking that they're bad, for example. And finally, there is one more set of things that you should look into uh, in this topic and that is the connections around the battery and the alternator. You should look at resistance and voltage drop between the two. And that will be the subject of the third and last video in this series.